your ideas and invite them in out of the cold and give them a nice bowl of warm soup and maybe, maybe not, they end up as a skin suit in our basement later. It's the show where we pop your ideas piece after piece into our mouth like so much bubble gum and turn it into the biggest, stickiest wad of creativity that we possibly can. It's the show where we grind up your ideas into a smooth mix, throw that into our vape machine, and fucking rip on that for a sweet, tasty high. It's the show where we host a freelance gynecology clinic in a hotel down by the <laughs> overpass and invite all of your ideas to come and attend. It's the podcast where we take your ideas, put them in a friendly environment, treat them as peers, talk to them as equals, and don't expose our genitalia to them without their consent. The show where we take your ideas, berate them for not being as awful as they should be, until they just become as awful as we think they should be, I guess. I'm Ryan, and I am the headmaster of this awful school for ideas. Yep, that's what we do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what my role is in here, but I'm pretty sure I'm berating yeah. someone. Yeah, I guess we also berate them if we work here. I, I, I'm okay at berating people when I'm real mad. Oh, I'm Cody, and I'm also I'm somewhere in the uh, echelon of beraters. I don't know if I'm near the top or the bottom. Uh, I'm not. I'm not that passionate about my job. <laughs> Your mid-level management. Yeah. I'm more of a. I'm more of a work, a work to live. Type Middle of management guy. berater. I'm a weekend warrior. Berating the kids is just something I do to get that paycheck, to get that green. <laughs> I, I think I care for the berating instruments. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they keep me in the the back lab making sure the instruments Which are is our voices apparently. You just you give us throat mm-hmm. massages. <laughs> <laughs> we got to keep we got to keep those uh vo- vocal cords limber. Keep it nice and nice and ready so we can berate these <laughs> these poor children. Oh, nope. that, those are oh, your cords. Are you're tight. real mean. Look at that, boy. Well, we appreciate that, Stephen, cuz you're obviously doing a really good job. <laughs> uh so sometimes his hands can wander mm-hmm. a bit though. No one's complained yet. So what we do is we solicit (laughs) ideas, and we smash them together until they become bigger, better ideas and worlds unto themselves. I I just happened to have overheard somebody talking about their beehives last Mm -hmm. weekend while I was at a kid's birthday party. He did say that bees have to make a certain number of pounds of honey to survive the winter, so... They're either... I'm I'm assuming they eat it, otherwise they're just sleeping in it to stay warm. Or... Or they make that honey. They make that honey as a sacrifice for their human overlords who keep them warm mm. in winter. But if the bees don't make enough, maybe he's just saying like, if my bees don't make me enough goddamn <laughs> pounds of honey, I smoke those. bees. I turn the space heater off, and they're fucked. <laughs> I turn their, I turn their co- honeycomb space heater off. <laughs> space bees, heater. you haven't you haven't met your quota. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get evicted, bees. <laughs> I've got your queen hostage, bees. <laughs> if you want to see your queen again, you better make that honey. You're, you're half a pound short. Well, some people just really need to get that power fixed. Winter's coming, <laughs> bees. I need my honey. If we didn't have to get it on, if getting it on wasn't an option, like why would you do anything? What would you do, Cody? What would you do all day if that just was off the table? It's it's hard to think about that because I'm just so horned up all the time <laughs> that I can't even separate like my mind, my my reality. That. That's such an important part of my identity. Like as much mm. as you know, people might try to deny it, but I'm I am a flesh and blood living human mm. being. I'm warm blooded man. Mm-hmm. I've got I've got thick, wet, hot water pumping through my veins. <laughs> You've got just, needs. It's it's that red water, that good, delicious, <laughs> it's that red good water. red water. <laughs> And it goes where it needs to, when it needs to. Oh, yeah. And it's not like I'm a, a, an exceptionally highly motivated person in general, but if I really had to think, like, oh, what's at the crux of my motivations, it's getting that hot red water where it needs to. <laughs> I'm, just, uh, I'm just imagining you standing at the altar at your wedding day saying this to your wife. <laughs> this is... Clown dimension people can't hurt us or kill us. So the only way that the animals can serve <laughs> That's my favorite sentence. The, the <laughs> only way that they can survive like a clown shark is to eat other clown dimension things. So it's cl- clownabilism. Uh, so yeah, cl- exactly, <laughs> clownabilism. So like you might be like, these, what the fuck is the deal with these clowns? And then like a gorilla clown comes and grabs a human clown and rips him apart and like 
the balloon intestines are coming out everywhere in glitter blood and stuff like that. <laughs> and he's just devouring this guy in front of you. And you're like, yeah. is this supposed to be a joke or what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so <laughs> <good>. horrifying. <laughs> You put two people in the room and one of them's Nicolas Cage and you tell them to absorb each other? <laughs> Who do you think's walking out of that room? Even if, you know what? Yeah, Even if yeah. you do fucking absorb Nicolas Cage, you know who's walking out of that you room? You become Nicolas Cage. It's Nicolas, <laughs> Nicolas goddamn Cage. I never expected in my life to want to know more about the the Wario canon. Yeah, what, is, you know? what is the story there? <laughs> specifically, specifically Wario's family. Who are Wario's parents? And the only way that I want to learn about the Wario canon is by them releasing a live-action Wario movie starring Danny DeVito. <laughs> Danny DeVito as Wario is the best idea uh, Hollywood ever. needs to get on that because Danny DeVito is getting kind of old. Can you imagine how much money it would take to... To pay Nintendo to let you shit all over their franchise like this. <laughs> Dude, what? Do you think Nintendo would consider that shitting all over their franchise? Or do you think Nintendo would be on board as well? Do you have well? any idea what Wario is? I look forward to seeing Danny DeVito eat a whole clove of garlic. But you know what? <laughs> that, is, that is just fucking canon. So we're, we're, we're participating in the reproduction process of plants. Potentially, a yeah. Bit. yeah. By eating them. <laughs> Hey, big boy. Hey, big boy. You want some of these? Hey there. How do these That's look? Fun. That's a fun way to think about it. Uh, you like what you see, big boy? That apple tree over there is really coming on to me. Huh? They find it really pleasurable to have their fruit snatched. I got a pair of juicy ones for you, big boy. Put your bunch uh, down on this. Big old, big old sweet granny apples, huh? So the oh, they've learned to communicate with people. And animals. We can't even communicate with animals. We have to use plants to help us communicate with animals. We have to use plants as like a middle person. <laughs> the bridge between us and the monkeys. <laughs> when you're trying to talk to your horse, when you're trying to plow the fields, you have to like talk to the grass or whatever. Your dog says you should eat me, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, re- I, I don't know. I like the idea of just some sort of beautiful, verdant, like bucolic planet where the juggalos can just romp around <laughs> freely just naturally with arose. the other juggalos like the rivers of just, fago just sup fago out fresh from the river you know <laughs> just enjoy just enjoy life and the love of god and white man rap bask in the shade of the fago tree bask <laughs> bask in the shade of the fago tree eat the eat the fago berries from the fago bush <laughs> kill the fago animals for their fago meat <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> sounds really gross, actually. Yeah. It's so sticky. It's always so sticky. <laughs> oh, no. Just buy a bunch of random stuff and see what the reaction is from the cashier. If it's not insane enough, then return everything and yeah. go back in again. Razor blades you... and a belt. Like, oh, you must be making a razor whip. You could just buy a razor whip in aisle nine, you know. Yeah, you don't have to make that yourself. <laughs> we got those pre-made for you. This is Walmart. This is welcome, welcome to Walmart, Palace of the Dam. <laughs> <laughs> his parents, his parents. The moment, the moment that Voldemort stepped into their house when when Harry was a little baby, <laughs> James would have pulled out that shotgun and blasted him in the face right then and there. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck you, Voldemort. Does Expelliarmus work on guns? <laughs> no. Expelliarmus blasts your wand out of your hand. Does it blast? Yeah. Like, if you're eating a sandwich, can you Expelliarmus a sandwich <laughs> out of your hands? Everyone is a space pirate. It's the only known occupation. But they're not in space, and no one is sure how to get there. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. Can we interpret space as something different, do you think? Like a personal space pirate? A personal, a personal space pirate. They go around robbing people's personal space. There are some space pirates at work. I'm just going to straight up. <laughs> people comment on my space t- taking God, it. I hate space pirates. Fucking space pirates are such assholes. Thanks for listening to the Disposable Worlds sampler mix. If you want to listen to the rest of the show, find us on iTunes or Google Play or wherever it is you find your podcasts. 